Andrew, before you start, I got to get your reaction. I, I talked to uh, your conservative counterpart uh, of yours, uh, reaction to the poll. What's your reaction generally to the VOCM abacus poll, which continues to show your party with a, a healthy lead, a lead, a 14 point lead, and also a big lead on the issue of uh, accountability and leadership? What do you what do you attribute those leads to? Well, I mean, obviously, we uh, we have to be happy with that. But, you know, it's positive news. I like the fact that the, the trends have been going this way and, and are staying that way. So we're very happy. Uh, I, I think it all really starts at the top with our leader. Uh, you know, since Dwight uh, Ball has been there, uh, people have, have come to trust Dwight and believe in Dwight. And I think that's carrying on. The more that people get to know him, it, it starts at the top. So I think that's the big thing. I also think that it uh, coincides with the fact that the current government uh, – for some time now, you know, it's been ha hasn't been accountable, and the number of the steps that they've taken have led people to lose trust and lose faith. So I think when you combine those two factors, that may lead to it. Uh, but again, good news. I haven't seen all the info, and I'm actually uh, traveling today, okay. so I well, I've been listening to you actually as I drive. So I've been hearing uh, what the people have to say and hearing what you had to say. So, again, it's a good step, but, uh, you know, onwards and upwards, you have to continue doing what seems to be working, and that is getting out and connecting with people and listening to people. One of the, and then just one more question in, in this area, and then we can move on to whatever you'd like to, to talk about. One of the criticisms you will have heard it this morning from uh, Tony, the Tory, and, and from <laughs> others is, uh, so, you know, take that. I mean, Tony has a perspective. We know what it is, and we res can respect that perspective. Lots of liberal partisans have called, too, but I think it's broader than Tony, and it's one that the provincial liberals share with the federal liberals, and that is great numbers, likable leader, but we don't know what you stand for at this point. How do you react to that? Because I hear that a lot about both liberal parties. How do you react to it, and how do you deal with it? When do you give more information on what you would do if you were in government? Well, I mean, again, that's that's something that comes with, uh, I guess, uh, as you move up in the polls, people want to know uh, what your policy is. I think we've given an indication of that through our performance in question period and in the House and what we say about issues, especially when it comes to the economy, when it comes to health care. I, I would say that uh, it's unusual for any political party to give a policy uh, handbook a maybe a year before an election. I certainly know the Conservatives didn't do it back in 2003. It came out just before, and I think that's the same for most policies. I think that's actually just smart politics. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there's a number of things that we stand for. One of them, actually, I was listening to uh, Tony's call, and again, I I'll give Tony credit because he, uh, he's always there for his team, you know, rain or shine, he's there, and, mm -hmm. and he stands up for them, and that's fine. But one of the things he talked about uh, that I, I, I sort of have – to get into was okay. his comments on health care and that's one of the big driving forces you know uh, of where we need to be and what we've talked about so one of the things that we've done actually we did it last summer is uh, we sat down and had a roundtable summit with health care professionals advocates and, and groups from all over the province in St. John's we did it over the course of a day and had two different sessions and talked about basically look where's health care right now and where do we need to be now, one of the things that uh, that Tony said, which is you know patently false and ridiculous, actually, is that we're going to cut health care. One of the things we've heard from groups is that they realize that the investment in health care mm -hmm. is significant. They're not asking for more money. They realize we've probably reached that. I think we're at 40 cents on every dollar is going into health care. Mm -hmm. What we need to have and what Dwight Ball has been saying and we've been saying constantly is we need to have smarter health care spending. We need to look at measures that are, you know, if we put them into place, we're going to see the effects down the road. And you'll hopefully see the health care costs trend downwards if you make the smarter investments now when it comes to yeah. youth wellness, when it comes to a diabetes strategy. These are the things. And that's, and again, we are hearing that from the professionals and the advocates. And, and one of the important things that I really took heart of when we sat down with them, they said, we haven't been asked to do this in forever. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you know, we're so happy to sit down and talk and, and realize that we have to have a, a, you know, a partnership between all the professionals and again, individuals like myself who, you know, I guess I'm a legislator and policymaker, uh, hopefully, 
that you know we need to listen to the professionals to figure out how we can get better spending for those dollars. Well, and one one of the challenges here that uh, the current government deals with, you would deal with if uh, if the Liberals became government or the NDP if they became government, of course, is the demography. There's not much you can do about an aging population, and lots of the research does show that as you age, you require more health care. What one of the things that's come up on the show, and maybe you can quickly touch on this, Andrew, and I'm not asking you to make policy on the fly, but get your reaction. Action from it because that's always a dangerous thing. I don't want to get you in trouble with your leader, but um, I've had a couple of calls about uh, people and their seniors' homes have been in the news, as you know, saying they'd vote for a party that promised to invest more in, in seniors' homes. How realistic a proposition is that to see the Liberals or, or anybody else spending more money uh, to build more seniors' homes? Well, I mean, I don't want to get into seniors' homes specifically, but I, I did hear one of your callers, and there's something that we've been listening to is, is seniors uh, specifically, seniors in, you know, when it comes to this province, we've all seen the demographics, as you say, and, the, and, and we have a, a very, uh, I guess, rising trend in seniors. We have more seniors. We're going to have more. This is not something new. We've seen it coming. So we do, do need to recognize that and figure out, you know, how do we continue to take better care of our seniors, provide them with quality access to health care, but at the same time realize the fact that we have a huge province and, and, you know, a long ways to go to make sure that these services are provided. I deal with it on a daily basis, mm -hmm. I live in Port of Basque. I represent Virgil Lapoil. We have to travel for health care, and it's very hard on our seniors. So we have to do things like, uh, and this is a simple one, is when it comes to telehealth, uh, yeah. this is something that I know it's growing, but there's still some pushback in some cases. We need to do more. We need to make it easier for seniors to remain in their community but still get access to health care. Uh, I'm working on things like that now, when, but sometimes you see pushback. I don't know why. But when it you know it's easier sometimes to bring the services to people, a, you know whether it's a mobile vascular clinic for example, these are things that you can do that may save us money and at the same time provide better care for our seniors. But uh, to the gentleman's point, they call her. That's something you're going to hear of more, especially as we move forward. I've met with seniors groups. I was at the seniors resource center lately, and I'm hoping to do something very soon to meet with seniors across the province because it is a large group, and we need to recognize that fact. So, and it, you know, it's obviously important. All right. Well, appreciate your time. Appreciate yeah. your call. Got to take a news break here. If I could get two quick things in before you If you, you can do it quickly. in 30 seconds, do it. 30 seconds. I'm on my way to Ramia for the Rock Island Music Festival, and uh, you know, it's a great opportunity. If anybody's never been down there, come on down and check it out this weekend. It's a beautiful island. It's a beautiful uh, place to hear some great music and meet some new people. And to get there, I had to drive through the entire district of St. George's, Steve Mill East, where we've got a great candidate in Scott. <laughs> I look forward to that by-election. All right. Well done. You did it under 30 seconds. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tim. Bye. Bye-bye.